Welcome to the Land of the House channel. I'm Seth. It's now been five months since I installed this eight kilowatt inverter with the big 280 amp hour battery to take my house almost off grid. Now this inverter is a clone. Uh, Vest Woods is selling this one, but it's also a uh, Blue Sun EG4 and a host of others. So uh, it's an eight kilowatt inverter that has four MPPT charge controllers and I currently have six kilowatts of solar coming into it. I wanted to do a five month update and let you know how it's been performing here on my house being basically off grid the entire time. Before I only had three kilowatts of solar coming into this and I would drop the battery down to the 20% cutoff and I'd have to flip back on grid power for a while. But ever since I installed the additional three kilowatts of solar to make six, I've not had an issue whatsoever. Here in the summer, I've not seen the battery drop down below the 70% mark. And within two to three hours in the morning, it's back up to 100% running smooth. So let me go ahead and do an overview of the system and just tell you how things have been here using this setup for my off-grid system. I do have an hour long video on the channel showing the unboxing and install of this entire system. So the eight kilowatt inverter is up here. And then I've got some breakers with midnight classic surge protectors. And then this 280 amp hour battery down here on the floor. So let's go ahead and walk through the system from solar all the way to the final product. The middle set of panels, as you see right here, was my original three kilowatts of solar coming into this off-grid system. I then later installed the second set of solar panels. As you can see right now, they're both receiving full sun and we're getting up there close to three to 4,000 watts coming in. So basically, I have those two strings separate running at 450 volts. So that comes down through some conduit into the ground here comes down and then goes into the house right down here as you can see uh, perhaps right in there all right I also have a grounding rod that goes down here to prevent uh, any issues with ground both strings of my solar power come in from the crawl space right here they sweep into a piece of conduit and go behind the battery and that meets up here into these breaker boxes so if I open this up this side over here is the solar and that is also connected to a midnight solar 600 volt surge protector. Basically, if the voltage goes above 600 volts, which it's currently at about 450, then uh, that will trigger and prevent everything from being damaged by a surge, uh, theoretically. <laughs> this is also solar coming in, and I've got this uh, over here as well, so both sides of that solar will have protection there. All right, so next we've got the uh, solar power going up into this box and it kind of sweeps over. I know you're not supposed to have DC and AC in the same box. Um, so that goes over here. I just wanted it to look prettier with these uh, pieces of conduit instead of having more conduit running around here. So anyway, uh, so my two legs of solar go up into the inverter here and uh, go to separate MPPT charge controllers. And then out of this box, I have the uh, basically 240 coming out and it will hit both sides up here and power this panel off grid. So I also have, uh, I've not put in these spacers in here yet, but what I've essentially done is taken connectors and each wire coming from the house then goes up through this conduit here to meet into this box and essentially power all of these things. So all of these circuits have been running off grid now for five months. So the inverter itself has an app, which is really fantastic. I'll show you a clip here with uh, some early morning sun coming in. Now you can see much of the information on the display that you can see in the app. So for instance, the uh, first solar panels that I have coming in are doing uh, about 560 watts right now. There's eight, 900. Uh, 
as you can see it kind of fluctuates there especially depending on the cloud coverage outside I can click this down and see that the second set of solar is also doing over a thousand watts and let's check to see what the battery state is right now 99 percent it fluctuates between 99 and 100 percent depending on what's going on in the house but uh, now in the winter time I would use a lot more of the battery and uh, would have to see uh, I actually have this system connected up so that it could be turned on to charge from uh, the grid. So if I were to flip this big breaker right here, which I actually need to name, it would basically take the inverter out of the uh, EPS mode, as you see right here, and it would turn it into grid mode and charge the battery from the grid. But I didn't want that to be a thing, and so I put a breaker in so I could just turn that off and use this system as off-grid. But I have been extremely pleased with the outcome here. Now the menus in this inverter are a bit tricky and uh, perhaps hard to read sometimes. There is actually another app that you can install and it's a, uh, an installers app. Only one person can be logged into the inverter and it lets you change a lot more settings that otherwise are not available in the menus. One of those being the timed solar delay. So there was a time where the inverter kept uh, clicking on and off and it would shut down the whole house because uh, it was triggering, it, it basically the point where there is sun or no sun for the solar would either turn on or turn off the inverter. And that was really frustrating. So I had to increase the delay time to like, I don't know, a minute. <laughs> and basically it was the transfer between solar power and battery power. And so now uh, there's no issues whatsoever. I've had to update the system two times and the power flickered uh, whenever that update happened. Other than that, this system has not had any glitches in five months. Now the Vestwood's battery is extremely heavy, but has been well worth it. It is a lithium iron phosphate, so the reason it's in the house is because it has to stay above freezing, and of course we get temperatures down to zero sometimes here in the winter. Now one issue that was uh, quite a task to solve was the data cable that feeds from the battery to the inverter. The company sent one and it did not work, and so we went back and forth for probably, I don't know, three or four weeks or better, and it turned out that whenever there are too many pins present uh, it doesn't work so I actually had to cut the cable and uh, only allow the I think it was two wires to be present and uh, by cutting the other uh, strands out of that wire then it uh, has worked flawlessly it talks back and forth from the battery to the inverter no problem now setting up the battery was no problem besides having to haul this thing upstairs and get it in here my neighbor came over and helped me out and we got it up in here. But as far as actually turning the battery on and connections, it's just two cables uh, for the positive and negative right here. And then you've got a power button and then you've got your data port there. Now it does have the option to string more than one of these batteries together if you needed to have more storage. Um, so as far as the battery goes, very easy to set up. Uh, now the inverter was a different story because uh, you have all of the wiring that goes into this. Um, so if I were to break down the wiring real quick, I've got the breaker coming in from solar over here and then solar over here as well. Those go up and over into the inverter. So the two strings of that are for the PV. Then over here, we've got, uh, if I can get down here, uh, you've got your uh, grid input. So that would take uh, both sides of the grid and charge this over here. And then this side over here is the load. So you've got your uh, two uh, positives and then the, uh, the neutral there. And it also has the uh, ground wire going outside as well. Had to set up this little dongle for having the Wi-Fi. You also have to get your two battery cables in there. And then uh, also you've got to have this uh, data cable here. Now to break the battery, I've got uh, one side going in here. And then this one right here is a big, uh, what was it, 250 amp uh, breaker there. 
to turn off the battery power going to the inverter. Now one thing I found out is that uh, you've got your reset button over here, that has to be on, but the system also doesn't work if PV uh, is turned off. So that also has to be on. So both of those must be on for the system to work. I had quite a number of people commenting asking for an update on the system and so here you go. I've been very pleased with having this battery and this inverter running my house off grid. As far as the loads go, I've had the refrigerator, the dishwasher, toaster and microwave all going at the same time and I also have my washing machine hooked up to this as well and I have never even gotten close to using the 8,000 watts that this thing can put out. Now whenever you do have several of the bigger loads going, the cooling fans will kick on pretty loud and as you can hear right now, the idle state of this inverter is pretty loud. So you definitely want to have this in a room that's going to be quiet uh, or you can close it off and it's insulated because it will be uh, audible, especially at night. Now whenever I have the battery somewhat discharged and the full sun is happening on the panels, uh, I'm getting close to, I guess, 4,500 watts out here, this inverter uh, fans will kick up real loud. So you definitely know whenever the clouds are passing or not, because the uh, inverter will tell you. All right, uh, if you want to watch the review on the battery or the full hour-long install of this inverter, I will have links to those videos down below. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video.